already covered that. So whatever properties your God has, it'll have predictions based on the nature of whatever your God is. And then those would be the things that are evidence. So my answer covered that. Do you have any evidence for your God? I don't understand what you mean by that. You understand? So novel uh, predictions the, are... Um, wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me tell you what, which part uh, mm-hmm. I don't understand. It's um, the novel uh, testable prediction is too large. L- like uh, my, my coffee cup will fall down the tab, uh, fall down f- the table is a novel testable prediction. It is a prediction made on what God said would happen if you drop a coffee, ca- a coffee cup from your table. So it is a novel testable prediction. And I don't think this is what you are looking for as a proof for God. Therefore, novel testable prediction is not enough. You need to specify what, novel what means you new. mean. By... Novel means new. <laughs> yeah. So, so a coffee cup falling would not be new. It has been new at one point. Uh, maybe before there were coffee cups. But novel predictions would be like in science, when we want to discover a new law, they predict like the curvature of light around the sun or predict that black holes will exist when they've never been seen before or predict that a new particle like a boson will be discovered or predict that there's a new interaction that we haven't discovered. And they discover like, oh yeah, that's evidence. So novel means a new thing that's never been seen before that would be expected if your God existed. Yeah. And I'm asking you, what is this new thing that you are talking about? I don't think you know what you are talking about when you say a new thing. It would depend on your God. So like the properties of your God will determine that. Before you answered, uh, earlier, I said specifically the Catholic God. Well, I don't know anything about the Catholic God. You would have to tell me what the properties of your God is. Okay, yeah, that's it. That's, that's the, the, the point I wanted to underline here, is the lack of knowledge of God. Uh, here in this conversation, what I wanted to point out is that atheists who have the position there is not enough evidence for God or there is no God, these atheists lack the knowledge of God. When they say God, that's because you have to they, present it. That's how wait, hypotheses work. Wait. You have a hypothesis. You have to present the <laughs> hypothesis. I don't know anything about wait. your hypothesis. Can I just pause right wait. here? Because you're doing it exactly wait. again. No, you're attacking <laughs> Randolph's. What he Randolph gave, what he would uh, think would be believable, would convince him for a God. T Jump said the same thing, and each time that they ask you for good evidence for this God, you're trying to attack our knowledge base. Assume no one here, I mean, the Catholic Church is just early Christianity, but let's just assume we don't know anything about the early Christian Church, or the Vatican, modern day Vatican. All right, what is your God, and why do you think he exists? All right, Amy, thank you very much uh, for your question, and sorry, this is not what I wanted to talk about during this session <laughs> on the day's airplane. Uh, right. This is not the subject. I wanted to talk about. I'm not here to teach you about God. I'm here so, to point out. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we're not going to yeah. do that here, Luke. So yeah. you're only saying that because. So wait, earlier in this wait, conversation, wait, Luke, Luke, we're not going to do that. Wait. You're going to address the questions directly. Taco, what was I going to say? I have no idea, but you were just saying that that you're not going to do that. You're not going to engage the way we want you to engage, and so. That's not how we're going to do this, right? Earlier in this conversation, you were saying that they didn't know the truth of Christianity or whatever, right? And they didn't understand it, right? Something like that. The problem here is you're simply rejecting the self-evident truth of our shared naturalistic, atheistic reality that's been revealed to all of sound mind through both natural and special revelation in an undeniable way. And Amy was simply asking you, to explain what justification that you use to reject the truth that's already been revealed to you and make sure that it wasn't in your own right or to make sure that it's not in your unrighteousness right that you don't just want to be a main character in a cosmic battle of good and evil right so can you address amy's question please directly and and not try to guide the conversation because that's what we're doing we're guiding the conversation right 
Oh, and just one thing. There's people in our audience are uh, concerned. Luke, they want to make sure that you know how to find the chat. Um, if you have any difficult with it, just uh, let us know. I'm sorry. I'm on phone right now, and I'm not in front oh. of uh, the phone. I cannot read anything that is typed in the chat. No problem. Okay, that's good to know. No problem. Uh, the oh. only thing posted there was my cosmic challenge to you, but you already know what it is, so it's okay. I, yes, I, I already know well, that it is, and 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 the question is the same. What makes you think that God could do that? And and okay, so what you're doing, like, uh, if if you if Catholic you say God, that you're I'm, if you say your God is not capable well, of doing this stuff, um, then this is not going to work. He's going to fail my cosmic challenge. Um, now, you did come up saying that you have this idea of proving God to atheists. Uh, so, as Taco just alluded to, it's what you started with. So. We can carry on with that if you like. I came up with the claim that atheists don't know when, what they are talking about when they claim that there is not enough evidence for God. That's the claim I well, came up with. Right. Okay, here uh, you you kind of you kind of fall in a pit where you generalize the idea about atheist because the problem is. We say we don't have enough evidence for God. That means that there is some 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 point in our past someone presented evidence that we don't have. You claim that we don't have evidence or we don't know anything about your God. So the burden the burden is on you right now to present your God for us. So we have the knowledge. Then if you're not willing to present your God to us this conversation is moot because you are saying we don't know anything about your God and we say yes we don't know anything about your God please present it and he said no I cannot present it because you don't know anything about my God now there's uh, something important here so if we don't know enough about your deity to be able to make a claim about it then yeah. the default is not believing it because why should we believe something that we don't know enough about I, I have another but, question that I would like to ask Luke because um, so it, when it, it's okay, no, not not answering the question I just well, was just asked to me. Okay, I'm I'm listening to you, Jefferson. Oh yeah, uh, go ahead, Luke, and then we can hear Jefferson. Yeah. All right. Here's the thing: uh, when you claim that there is not enough evidence for God, you use a word, God, and the word God is used to convey an idea, and the idea that you use to to when when you say God is not defined enough for you to use the word God. If you say there is not enough evidence for Schumbluck and you don't know what Schumbluck is, there is no value of truthness to your claim because you don't know what you're talking about. Schumbluck yeah. is something that you don't have knowledge, you lack the knowledge of Schumbluck and therefore you cannot make a statement about Schumbluck. The same thing applies to God. I take some pot shots at Catholicism so well, he's well we actually Luke, Luke, if you can hold off uh, oh uh, no i can hold have off. a question yeah, and then absolutely. we can get to you. i'm sorry go right no on. no it's okay I, I guess i don't I, I don't really understand so if if the basic idea i mean i i kind of get where luke is going with this but if the basic idea is just to say okay atheists don't have a deep enough understanding when it comes to certain definitions of god per a certain christian denomination in luke's case roman catholicism then they're not rejecting something that they really understand one way or the other. So, Luke, if you had somebody that you were speaking with that is now an atheist and say they maybe they even went as far as going into seminary, they were on their way to becoming a nun or a priest, um, they understand Christ, uh, Catholic dogma and they've rejected it. Would you would you ex would it would that be necessary for you to take claims of atheism of a lack of belief in God seriously at that point, or do you just object to the idea when atheists come around and say there's not enough evidence out there to to convince me that a God exists? So um, the uh, the one who is an atheist and has been studying God, who has so he claimed I have enough uh, knowledge about God to claim that there is not enough evidence for God, would have the answer of specific example for a novel testable position about this God that he says there is not enough evidence. Okay, so I think I see what's going on here. 
So I'm telling you that I don't believe. So I I need something to, and I told you what I need to demonstrate to me otherwise. I'm not saying there absolutely is no deity, but from what you're saying, it sounds like you're expecting there's some evidence. So yes, for those who claim there is no deity, they do carry a burden of proof um, because they're making a claim. Um, just like the theists who claim there is a deity carry a burden of proof. For myself, I just don't believe... I don't hold a position distinctly saying whether or not a deity exists in most cases. So in those cases, I just don't carry any burden at all. Now, when it comes to the Christian God, I can actually give you some uh, example of why, but I, I think you and I are going to disagree on what God's capabilities are, and that's probably where we're going to have some issue. But I'll let you continue to address uh, the others, including Amy. Can I get a word in I had a follow-up to that, too. Um, and yeah, um, I have mine written down, so plan it by all means. Yeah, so Luke, the, the default position on something is not to believe it until a certain standard has been reached that would disprove the idea. Because if that's the right. case, then I could just sit here and be like, Luke, do you believe in Shlamalama Ding Dong? And you'd be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I, and then I could just sit here and be like, well, since you don't know enough about it, then you can't claim that it doesn't exist, and you can't claim that you don't believe Wait. in it either. But that's not be, be, how it be works. Be careful. Sorry, sorry Bennett. Be careful. There is not enough evidence for. That's the claim I I cannot have about shalom alaykum ding 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 the thing from Luke. I call it from Luke. You gave it another name, but that's okay. It's uh, similar. So the claim that I cannot have, because I don't know what it is, is there is not enough evidence for from Luke. You understand? I said that earlier, but did you remember when I said that? No. No? Okay. All right, let me repeat myself. There is a, a claim here. It's not there is not from Luke. It is there is not enough evidence for from Luke. It is different. There you are two different things. The evidence. You can't. Those, you can't just say things, you not knowing the evidence isn't my problem. Maybe. You have to if produce I, the evidence. There is no okay, knowledge look, about look, the okay. look. Thank you look, very look. much. Allow me to finish my phrase. Thank you. Just, just a minute. Look, what you don't understand. We're not saying there is no objective evidence. Like there is totally no evidence. We're saying we do not know. We do not have the evidence. I don't think, I don't think that's his point. So we do not have sufficient point. evidence to satisfy our own criteria. Uh, and second, that's point, and, uh, Luke. Luke is making a different point. Luke is simply saying that if I come up with a new idea, any new idea, call it Schumbluck, and you said there is no evidence of Schumbluck, there's not enough evidence of Schumbluck. Schumbluck doesn't exist. That would be unjustified because I haven't told you anything about Schumbluck. And in the case of coming up with a completely new idea that no one's ever heard before. Luke would be correct. We can't say there's no evidence of something we've never heard of before. But society has a general usage of the term God. God means certain things. It means lots of different things to lots of different people, but it all shares some properties outside of space-time, created the universe, has a non-physical mind, all these things. All of those things have been demonstrated to have no evidence. And so anytime you use the word God, we are going to label that usage of the term to correspond to everybody else's usage in the past history of all humankind, who has also used that word, to have some of those properties that we've already demonstrated do not exist. Now, you may not use it in that way. You may have your own specific criterion that doesn't correlate to how everyone else uses the word. But based on how everyone else in society in the world uses the word, we can justifiably say there is no evidence of God. It does not exist because the criteria and properties that those things have have been demonstrated to not exist. Um, now, you would be correct if no one had ever used the word God before in all of the history of the world, and you just came up with the word God and said, I believe God exists, we would not be justified to say God does not exist or there is no evidence of God because we don't know what properties this entails. But since society has a general usage of that word and a general set of properties that apply to that word, we can say it doesn't exist. And you making up a new set of properties for your specific kind of a god, unless it doesn't have any relation to the normal usage of the word, then we are justified to say your god doesn't exist. So, so you would need to actually come up with a new term to define your god who is different than all of the other gods. So if your god shares any of those properties, if any of the other gods we've ever heard of that we use the word god to refer to, like non-physical, outside of space and time, created the universe, uh, a mind that isn't 
made of matter, any of those things, then we are correct when we say God has no evidence. There is no evidence of your God. It doesn't exist. We are completely correct. Your point would only work if we had no past history usage of the word that had a bunch of associated properties that generally apply to that label. Thank you, T-Jump. This was an excellent and very helpful uh, interjection. Yeah. So, T-Jump, the, 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 uh, the main um, point I will underline, you are correcting what you say. God is a word to go an idea, that's a general idea. But when I came up to the stage, I talked about specifically when it comes to the Catholic God. I said that because I knew that when, when it comes to God, there are many definitions, and I do agree that there is not enough evidence for the Zeus God. That's, there is no trouble for me about that. So God, Zeus, and this, this claim is correct. I have enough knowledge about Zeus to say that there is not enough evidence for Zeus. But when it comes to the Catholic God, I, I underline that theist, generally theist, I don't, I, I, I still, I have yet to meet a theist that, that would hold this claim. There is not enough evidence for God when he, he talks about, specifically about the Catholic God. Because when it comes to the Catholic God, most people don't know what they are talking about when they say I'm, there is not enough uh, evidence for God. Is it outside of space time? Is the Catholic God outside of space time? Uh, yes. Is the Catholic God a non physical mind? A non physical mind. Yeah, it's not like made of matter and energy, right? It's conscious, but it's not made of matter. Uh, it depends when. Sometimes he is, sometimes he's not. Okay, so sometimes he's not. That's good enough. That means no. So your God is just like all the other gods. It's outside of space time, not a uh, non physical. There's no evidence for it. It doesn't exist. I'm sorry. Did you did you get the novel testable prediction? The new there one? Are, there are no novel predictions for minds outside of space-time and non-physical minds. They don't exist. There is no such thing. So I know those two properties very well. And I know there is no evidence for those two properties. So if your God has those properties, your God has no evidence. If you knew what would be a knowable prediction about those properties, you could claim that there are no, there is there, there is no such thing because you would be able to test what you say uh, it is testable. But when you no, don't no, 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 know, no, no. That's, that's called a reversible burden. Of proof. Wait, 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 wait. I don't need to. It's irrelevant. It's relevant. It doesn't you matter whether I know it or not. Stop. Stop. Luke, 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 Luke. To talk Luke. About. Stop. 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 You hold the burden of proof to come up with a novel testable prediction. I don't. I don't need to know what a novel testable prediction would be for your hypothesis. It has nothing to do with me. You hold the burden of proof, as Mubarak was saying, to come up with a novel prediction of your hypothesis, and then you have to test it, and you have to confirm it. And then we then have the obligation to confirm your predictions, to, to, to replicate it, to do peer review and show that it actually worked. But we don't have to know what the novel prediction is at all. We don't, it doesn't matter whether we know. All that matters is, is, do you know? Can you tell us? Can we replicate it? That's, that's what is required. Me knowing what a novel prediction would be is irrelevant. Now, I can come up with some that would be correct if a god existed that was non-physical minds, but that doesn't matter because I don't hold the burden of proof. You do. You have to come up with the novel predictions, not me. It's your hypothesis. You have to do the work. Amen. And it would be extremely so, easy. I'm All you'd sorry, have to do I'm is sorry, demonstrate sorry, one you. prayer it being answered. my hypothesis. It is the atheist hypothesis. It what? is not mine. When you what? say, I don't have to come up with no. anything, I am not the one holding the claim there is not enough evidence for God. You are. I know Since you are Christ. all holding this claim, you are making the claim that there is not enough evidence, you have to present the novel test of proof. So I don't okay. have to. So, so, this, is, really so this, is, this is just an attempt to shift the burden of proof. Like, we're not the ones who are claiming your God anything like uh, generally the atheists don't claim your god doesn't exist right off the bat the default of an atheist is not believing so there are many atheists who will take a further claim and say they don't exist but to say i don't have sufficient evidence to validate your claim is me asking you for that evidence so 
you have that burden still. You can't go ahead and shift that to other people. That's a that's a, a trick that uh, some theists use, and it it just doesn't fly. Um, if I was to tell you um, before the the world knew about Antarctica that there's a place on Earth that we'll call Antarctica, and I describe it, um, you, most people are going to be saying, "Well, where's the evidence of that? Let's find it." And then it would be up to me to provide that evidence. It's not up to those other people to to, to prove that it's not there. If we claim Randolph, there isn't uh, evidence, you, you and you, Luke, me hold on. Of doing the, the same thing I no, accuse you of do doing, shifting the burden of proof. So I'm listening to the other no. guy, but yes, the difference you is you actually did I'm, I'm you. The difference is you're actually trying to shift the burden of proof. Luke, if also we... you are. When I came up here, I had a claim that you hold to be true. There is not enough evidence for God. You believe this is true. You, you, you say, this is a true claim, a claim that I know is correct when I say there is not enough evidence for God, but it okay. is not supported by anything. Now, now, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna lay out an accusation. You're using sophistry. You're changing my, my words. I'm telling you that I don't have enough evidence to uh, for this. And here's the evidence that would work for me. Um, you're uh, claiming that I'm saying is an all-encompassing thing. I did not do that. Can I also take... I'm going to finally take pot shots at this whole not responding Catholicism uh, thing. So, and feel free to respond to any one of these claims, but we know that saints don't do miracles. We know that drinking the blood of Christ does not do anything when you're drinking that or eating those little things that you put on your mouth. We know that the Trinity actually isn't in the Bible. You guys actually have to pull that out and make it, uh, once again, as Randolph would say, sophistry. We know there is no Father of God. We know that prophets don't exist. We know that Jesus didn't rise from the dead. Um, and that the most of the prophets in the Old Testament didn't exist. All of those are uh, Catholic beliefs. I was going to uh, say that one of the things that started the conversation was Luke um, had said to Randolph, because Randolph had made the claim, um, something like, about being made omniscient. And Luke asked him where he got that from, basically. Um, and while it's not the case, I, I think there are some Protestant denominations that think that after you die or after humans are made perfect at some point, we attain something like godlike knowledge of his plan and things like that. If you're a Catholic, Catholics don't think that, right? There's, there's a level of knowledge that God has that we as, you know, creatures will never get. But this is dogma. This is something that's just debated. So it seems to me this entire point that Luke is bringing up is that the atheists that are saying, I'm not like Randolph's doing, and I'm going to steal man Randolph's statement. I haven't seen sufficient evidence for me to be convinced of a belief correct. in God. You are correct. At, you are correct. Yeah. And, and Luke is trying to say, ah, the problem is, is that you are insufficiently aware of Catholic dogma to make that statement. The counter to that, I think. That's correct. Think, that's, I, that's exactly. Then, Luke, you down. need to produce the evidence. You can't, if we sit here and say we have not seen sufficient evidence, you can't just sit there and be like, oh, well, you don't even know what the evidence would be. That still doesn't make it true. We don't default to true. And you have to produce the evidence. Jefferson, do you want to answer Planet? where he was mistaken, you represented correctly my point. Could you answer Planet where he was mistaken uh, in his statement? I don't know that he's mistaken. I think he's, I think he's jumped two steps ahead of where I was going. I think that the issue that you seem to be having is, and, and this is a point that T-Jump made, if a person, just because a person does not understand, like in the situation that you brought up where Randolph is saying, what if God could make me omniscient for two weeks? And you're like, where the hell did you get that idea from if you were Catholic and understood anything about Catholicism, which I'm thinking in your case, you believe it is, you know, is really the, the, the strongest case of Christianity, it has the most truth in it, or all the truth in it, then a person like Randolph, Randolph would not be making that claim if he, would, if he was sufficiently uh, knowledgeable. Not 
of yeah. Catholic of That's Catholic great. scripture and dogma. The problem with that, though, is is that all you have to do is find one foundational aspect of it. So, say um, the Catholic uh, Catholic dedication and devotion to the concept of the Trinity. If you go to even Catholic critical scholars of the Bible, they will tell you often when you are in seminary that that is not in the Bible, that it is a part of church tradition and history. Yeah. Catholics, though, do base tradition as something like different to the Bible. The, the, the issue that can end up running into problems with Protestants is that it's also a scripture where they don't hold to the tradition thing, but that's a complicated thing. But that's where something where someone was like, well, wait, one of the concepts that uh, the, the Catholic God has is eternality. And we don't have evidence that a, a being, a, a, a mind, could be eternal. Right? They could just raise an objection to that. They don't need to have an all-encompassing comprehension of all of Catholic dogma to start poking holes and, 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 and becoming doubtful of central aspects of what the Catholics believe that God is. They could even have a problem with the idea that in the Catholic tradition, they hold that God is all love and merciful. That's part of his basic identity. But then they can see existence of unnecessary suffering or what they would call unqualified or excessive suffering in the world and say, well, that seems to contradict, you know, then you start getting into these arguments, you know, the art, you know, arguments for suffering uh, for atheists. So it just takes one for them to start knocking things down. Um, so I, I think that you are doing a little bit of a burden shift as you're trying to come in here and go like, listen, atheist, you're not Catholic enough to be able to just like say you haven't seen anything here enough to convince you. I think that you might be onto something if if atheists come in here and say if atheists are presenting themselves of like, what are the things you've heard about the Catholic God that you don't buy, that you can't believe? That's different. But the purpose of this room is for you to come in here and convince us that your God exists. Now, if you if you are coming in here and saying, look, I think that you guys are essentially wrong headed in the way that you're talking about that, that can be a difference of people talking past each other. So I think. Most everybody here is on the same page. The issue is most of these atheists here have not heard evidence sufficient for them to come to the belief that any gods exist. And what they're wondering is, what do you have? You simply saying, you just don't understand Roman Catholicism. And if you did, you may not be making that claim. That seems to be what you're implying. That's not enough. I hope I'm getting that right. That's not enough to convince you that your position is unfounded, or is it enough to convince you that you lack the knowledge needed to claim there is not enough evidence for God? If somebody doesn't have sufficient knowledge, they're still justified in not believing something. Provide right. any evidence. I, I don't believe you is different then there is not enough evidence. I don't believe right, so, you because so let me, let me there isn't enough bit. evidence. Let me let me change a little bit. I'm justified in believing God does not exist, even though I don't know what your definition of a God is, so long as your definition of a God has some similarity to the usage of anybody else in the world. So if your definition is any similarity at all to any of the other definitions, your God doesn't yeah, exist. I'm, I'm justified in believing your God does not exist. God, uh, Chicham, the, 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 you're going back to uh, the, the point where I underline, I'm specifically talking when it comes to the Catholic God. Yeah, yeah, uh, the, the, I, I, the start of this conversation is about the Catholic God. This is how, when I came up to the stage, I said specifically when it comes to the Catholic God. And you go back to the general position of what God means. I understand and I agree with you. Again, I agree with you, T. Jump, that there is not evidence for God in general because I have not evidence for the Zeus God. We talked about it earlier. Luke, 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 you, Luke, Luke, Luke. I'm saying go, there's no I, evidence for any of the specific gods, including yours. Your Catholic God has no evidence. I so am justified in believing your Catholic God does not exist. Now, now, I, Luke, I do want to. I, I want to make this point because. T-Jump is making the claim that I think that you're trying to go after, which is the claim. T-Jump is saying that that evidence is absent, right? Randolph's position and, and a lot of atheist position is not that 
that they are as strong as T-Jump in saying there is no evidence. What they're saying is when they say there's no evidence that proves a God for me, that's different. They're not trying to say there is an absence of evidence, period. And I, I am not convinced that that God is real and, and no one else should be. Right. But T-Jump's claim is stronger and he's making it on the basis of how he is defining in, in his previous argument his notion of uh, the existence of a non-physical mind. And he's, he's correct. There is no evidence for that. Now, if you say, well, that's just the limitation of human concepts or human language, that's fine. But I really do think that you're getting hung up on the fact that people are saying there's no evidence. That's a shorthand. Oh, for most right. of them are saying there's no evidence sufficient that's to enough. convince me. Luke, okay. let, me, let me clarify. So, Jeff, yeah, yeah, one second. One second. One second. Sorry, Luke, sorry, Luke, one second. Jefferson, one second. Jefferson, Jefferson you keep stop saying. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. No, oh, shit. Luke. Why can I say? Luke. Because I can, I'm better at expressing your point. So Luke's argument, he doesn't care about whether you believe God doesn't exist or whether there's evidence of God. Luke's argument is that atheists are unjustified to say there is no evidence for God, and they're also unjustified to say there is no God if you haven't been told the properties of God yet. That's his argument. So if he says any random word, a bloof bloof or whatever, and he comes to you and says, I believe in bloof bloof, you are unjustified to say it doesn't exist, and you are unjustified to say it has no evidence, because you don't know what properties he thinks are in the bluff bluff. That's his argument. And there is not enough evidence. There is not enough evidence for bluff bluff. It's 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 really important the enough, because Jefferson, it's the second time you come up with the, the claim that we are not claiming there is there is no God. We claim that for us. There is not enough evidence for for God. It's the second time you point out that, and I'm I am underlining no, 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 again no, for the no, third no, time. No, no. There is Luke. not enough evidence for God. And I'm trying to say that was not my claim. I'm trying to say that that is a that is a claim that some atheists make, and I and I, that's why I gave the example. T Jump is not making that claim. So so Luke, your argument is wrong. Because the word God has lots of known common properties between all of the gods. So your God, I can generalize and say your God has no evidence, just like Zeus has no evidence, because both of those things are supposed to be outside of space-time. So all flowers are flowers. So all gods share this property that outside of space-time, non-material minds, whatever. And so anything that has that definition has no evidence. Anything. Now, your God may be a specific kind, like a rose. A rose is a specific kind of flower that has specific properties to it, and I don't care about any of them. If it shares one property with the other gods, that it's non-physical, outside of space-time, if it shares that one property, then I am correct in saying your Catholic God does not exist and has no evidence, and there is not enough evidence for it, because there is not enough evidence for non-physical minds or for anything outside of space-time, regardless of all of the other properties you have. I don't care about the other properties. I can say your Catholic God doesn't exist because it has that one in common with every other usage of the term God, which also has no evidence. All right. So, T. Jim, here's the, 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 the thing I don't understand. How can you say uh, that uh, there is no evidence for outside of space-time when you don't know how to test outside of space-time. Because you hold the burden of proof. If I don't know what's in the box, if, if there's no, like, like, pretend we have a box and no one's ever looked inside the box. If no one has ever looked inside the box, we have no evidence of what's inside the box. And so if you're going to say it's anything, say it's a squirrel, there's no evidence it's a squirrel. If you're going to say it's a leprechaun, there's no evidence it's a leprechaun. My, what, what did you guys say, I just tried to believe there is not one of those things in the box. There's no it's going to be Schrodinger's cat, I'm sure of it. So, yeah, so uh, when, when there is something in the box, I claim there is something in the box, and you say there is no evidence for the thing in the box. You right. can hold the claim because you know how to open the box and look inside I, I don't, the I don't box. Know, I don't know how to open the box. I do not know how to open the box. I can still claim there's no evidence of whatever your claim is in the box. If you don't know what you're talking about, you can hold, you cannot make the claim that there is no evidence. Yes, the, yes the, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, he can. 
Okay, so you you say I can make the claim that there is no evidence for Schumbluck. Yeah. When you don't know what Schumbluck is. He's gone over this. And you, you don't know. Yes. know what you mean uh, by God, yes. and there's no evidence of it. No, you don't. Um, the 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 there is no you evidence said, for Schumbluck. You, you said you you, oh, no, you said mind. you said you said that your God is the Catholic God. And yet, at the same time, that you said at the same time he's not all powerful or um, uh, omnipresent, right? When Randolph asked you, he said most powerful. Most powerful. Is he omnipresent? It's most present, probably. I don't actually know. More, most present. That's what I think. Most present. I want to go back to outside of space time, but go ahead. No, no, no. Before before we go, I, I'll let you go back to outside of space time. But I want to know. I want to know a couple of things because you keep claiming that your your God is the Catholic God, yet all the I don't know personality, all the attributes you have presented so far did not match anything I could find about the Catholic God. So I I need to understand your own. Luke, special Catholic God, what is the attribute to it before I could continue this conversation with you? He's the strongest. What does that mean? Can he do anything? He maximally powerful, vote. maximally knowledgeable, maximally uh, the can strongest. Your, can your God grant powers to others? Uh, <laughs> like life? For example, this power? Powers. Uh, powers. Powers, like magical powers. The power to be able to levitate things with the power of the mind. Stuff like that. Mm. Be super strong, as long as your hair is super long. It's like the force in Star Wars. Can you grant it's powers not, like that to somebody? It could seem magical. It could look like magic, but it is not magic. It's still... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, sorry, it's hang through... On, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So you don't want to answer this question, it sounds like to me. The answer is yes and no, depending on what you mean by stuff or powers. All right, I just gave you an example. So I can use, I can think about it, and this boulder that even big trucks have trouble lifting, I can make it just levitate in the air with ease. That'd be telekinesis. Can your god grant telekinesis to a person? No, I don't think so. So he's not all powerful. Okay. That's correct. That's why I say the most, the strongest. No, then he's not the most all powerful. Who do, who do you know that can give you power to levitate things? Uh, according to Muslims, that would be Allah. Yeah. Yeah, does Allah exist? According to Muslims, they have exactly the same claims you have, so and the same evidence, apparently. You avoided to answer the question. Luke, yes. I don't think you know yes. enough no, about no, no. Islam yes. to make a claim that Listen Allah does not question. exist. Does the thing you pointed out that is stronger than God exist, yes or no? Yes. All right, please defend the position that the Muslim God exists, and there we go. Back okay, again. okay, okay, here's, here's, yeah, again. No, 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 no. That's, that's what, see, that see, more, more, more here's, let, me, let me respond to you, let me respond to you, let me respond, you have, you have, you don't have enough evidence, you don't understand the Muslim God, so you cannot deny it or you say you don't have evidence. Show me that you have enough evidence to know the Muslim God before you say that he doesn't exist. Exactly. So, yeah. point of moderation, Luke, when people are talking, and I, I know they've done it to you a little bit, and they've been, I've noticed people working better to not over-talk each other on our end. It's just a lot of people on our end, and so it's hard to manage, but everybody has been improving on it dramatically in this one conversation alone. But you continuously over-talk anybody that's trying to engage with you, and that's fine. If you want to over-talk, say, may I ask a question or may I respond so that we can do this in a polite manner. It'll make the conversation flow much better. Thank you. So, um, uh, I'm sorry, 
I, I think, did you get uh, the uh, what I was saying about you claiming that the Muslim God do exist? You don't. The you Aryan. don't know. You don't know the Muslim God. So you have to present. Why? Why do you deny the Muslim God, the same God that you don't know? When you talked over me earlier, you, you, I was pointing out the irony of your answer to the question: Does the God that is able to levitate, the, to give you a superpower to levitate the the, the rock, exist? And you answered yes. And yes. then I pointed out the irony if you're in your answer. I said. Could, could, do you understand the irony when you say God of the, the Muslim God exists and you call yeah. yourself an atheist? Yes, because it's 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 to show you that your point of view, your argument is false. Do you understand that? It's a conversation point of view. It's it's a it's a tool to use in talking to people. So basically, what I did, what, yeah. How do you so Luke, Just, he's, uh, he's showing the, the irony okay, yeah. of your argument. He's giving your own argument back to you. So just like you say, the atheists are unjustified to say there's no evidence of a God because they don't know what God is. You don't know what the Muslim God is, so you don't know or you can't, you're unjustified to say that it doesn't exist. And if it exists, it's more powerful than your God. And so when you say your God is the most powerful, you're saying the Muslim God does not exist, but you don't know what the Muslim God is. And so just like you're claiming about the atheists, you are unjustified to say that the Muslim God doesn't exist or to say that your God is the most powerful. And it's also very yeah. ironic for you to sit here and so, ask if we can defend you, the Muslim God because you haven't defended yours at all. You've provided zero evidence. So to jump, here's the, the, the thing. I could uh, defend my position that there is not enough evidence for the Muslim God. Uh, this position that I uh, that I hold, it is more likely that the God is a Catholic God than the Muslim God, and and it is a position that I hold. And I have a noble, testable prediction about what would convince me if okay. the Muslim God was real. This is something you're, that you're you talking. don't know about me. But when you say that he's good doing the th the thing I did to you to me, is like okay, avoiding the conversation that I want to have, which is the lack of knowledge. Of, about the Catholic God to have your conversation, which is let me bitch about the evidence that you present. Okay, are you saying more likely? That sounds like you're talking about probabilities rather than actual evidence. I mean, probabilities are evidence, but so, so I gave a full, complete answer to your original argument. Well, I can on, say your God does not exist. So, Tijan, he did say he was going to provide actual evidence of this. And then he went on to more likely, which sounds like he's pulling back a little bit. That's kind of what I was going to flesh out here. Well, evidence is probabilistic, so I don't think that's oh, sure. really yeah. a difference okay. between saying it's probable and it's evidence. Cause that's well, yeah, he was making definitive claim, and then he was saying um, uh, probabilities, so I just was curious there. But Luke, can I make, we can just agree that in this conversation alone, there has been no good evidence for the Catholic God. Yeah, we agree that's not the conversation that we're having right no, now. We we're, that's talking, all we're talking about the lack of knowledge of atheists. That's why I came up to this room and I and when asked by Randolph what did I want to talk about? And I I gave the subject of there is not enough evidence for God when it comes specifically to the the Catholic God is not supported by anything. And okay, there is yeah. no, uh, that's no right. I don't have enough evidence. yeah, I don't have sufficient evidence. Yes, that's, I agree. I don't have sufficient evidence to prove your, your to uh, to believe that your God is real. And I told you what my criteria was because you were interested in knowing what it would take. So I put up my cosmic challenge and said this is something. And then you started getting into particulars about the God. Your definition of the Christian God, the Catholic God, is quite different from how most Catholics and Christians define their God. So you're taking away omniscience and omnipotence and kind of makes the God sound kind of not very powerful and not Limited. very knowledgeable. And I would also like to keep on hammering home on this. The Catholic dogma, as we can tell, is largely wrong, not true. Um, so why do you believe that Catholicism is right? You're saying we have an ignorance of it. 
yet I feel like looking on the opposite side in, the Catholic Church is the largest denomination of Christianity, the most amount of Christians. So why are you a Christian? Why are you a Catholic? Why should others be? All right. Oh, uh, thank you for the question, Amy. I think uh, I'm I'm going to stop the conversation here and leave the place for someone else, because uh, it's it's another conversation. And if I answer you right now, it will go down another world different from the one I wanted to talk about on Taste the Plane today. We could it. talk about it uh, on another time if you want to. That would be really great. I will be able to answer the question. But right now, if I start to answer this question, all the questions will come up afterwards, and I will take the time from others, OK? Luke, uh, when you leave, please okay. hang around. Uh, JCC68, who's going to be our next guest, uh, is hoping that you'll hear what he has to say when he's on. Okay. Uh, apparently, he's got some thoughts on what you've had to say. Thank you very much okay. for joining us, and we look forward to talking with you again. Is that, is that, is that, is that OK with you, Thank Amy? Thank you, Luke. Amy, sorry. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, I think that's you. the main question, but it was that's a good it. conversation nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to, to, I don't want you to feel like I'm avoiding the conversation. I really want to answer your question, but right now it's not the time. I, I, pick, I, picked up, I took too much time already from others uh, with this uh, not lack of knowledge about the Catholic God from atheists. And uh, I think I, I, point, I, gave, I gave my point enough uh took enough of your time so uh, i'll Luke, wait for the other guy and uh and, and leave after uh, I... we do appreciate that you're wanting to keep it to one topic at a time thank you very much uh that's very nice i think he did a good job at demonstrating his lack of knowledge about catholicism hey jcc hello jcc 68 a, a friend of mine um uh welcome and thank you for joining us i think you had some things to say about uh uh, what Luke's uh, views were there, his ideas, and also you may have had some other things you wanted to add. Yeah, thanks. And you guys can call me James. Uh, uh, that's cool as well, too. So, um, yeah, I've spoken to Luke on several occasions. Um, and this, he starts off with a claim that a, a non believer does not have enough information to make a uh, justified position that they cannot believe that this God exists. So a good question to that would be like, what leads, what convinces you that these atheists or these non-believers do not have enough information? And is it possible that these atheists do have uh, enough information that is not convincing of them to not believe that this Catholic God exists? So it seems like Luke was not wanting to have honest dialogue in go down that avenue, and he was wanting to push his position. So it's very, um, although it was handled quite well, everybody up here did a great job in communicating with Luke. I don't think it was uh, completely an honest uh, di uh, dialogue from Luke's point, so it was very uh, frustrating for me to listen to. Well, I did call I'll call him out on sophistry at one point. Um, but yeah, I think the dialogue went quite well. We've uh, improved as a panel on this over time. Thank you very much. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to discuss today? Well, I, yeah, I do yeah. want to interrupt there for a little bit. So Luke's, Luke had a valid original argument. His original argument is that it was unjustified to claim something doesn't exist or that there's no evidence or that there's not enough evidence for a thing that you don't know anything about. That he is correct right. on that in basics. If we have, but since we already have some information about God, like the typical outside of space time or non-physical mind properties, which we know don't have evidence and don't provide evidence. We are justified to say that God does not exist. Um, so his original point was correct. It's just that he misunderstands epistemology on his second point, which is that he thinks it's unjustified to say, um, or that we're required to be able to come up with novel predictions for his hypothesis. So that part we don't need at all. Yes, I agree. Russ. Oh, and just before we, I just need to interject for a sec. Uh, Jefferson Spashcock says he needs to get going. Uh, Jefferson, did you have any final thoughts before you headed off? We really appreciate you being on with us. Uh, no, uh, I, I thought it was a good conversation with Luke. Um, uh, I think um, I think he ended it quite well. Um, yeah, I think some of it was kind of talking past some of the stuff and, and maybe not getting T. Jim's point. But no, other than that. Um, I'm good. Thanks for having me on. I'm sorry I can't stay longer, but uh, I do have some things I got to get done today. So, 
Sounds like a good call. Hey, thanks for joining us, Jefferson. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. Jefferson. Yeah. 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 Good to I, meet you, uh, Mubarak. And uh, um, JCC, I think I know you. I think I think I may have talked to you on Clubhouse back on Clubhouse. The, 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 Clubhouse. Yeah. Clubhouse. And maybe on uh, the SC server in Discord as well, possibly. Okay. Uh, and uh, if he's still listening, uh, best wishes to Luke. Uh, it was a good conversation. So take care, everybody. Have a fun one. I see Luke in the audience. Uh, yeah, and T-Jump, thanks for pointing out uh, what that Luke's argument was correct, uh, was valid. I, I do think that's important. People get credit for things when they are correct, when they are putting forward something that's credible. Yes. The yes, problem is, agree. by his own argument, if he rejected evolution, he would be presenting a contradictory position. It would be a performative contradiction, right? Which is, he rejects evolution, right? So that... There you go. As a Catholic? I think so. I think Luke rejects evolution. I think he's one of the, if I'm not, let's pull him back up real quick. Let's ask him. I want to know, because I think he's like one of those, look, <laughs> you reject evolution, right? <laughs> wrong. <laughs> no, you don't? Okay, I'm wrong. My bad, my bad. I, I thought he was another, uh, never mind, my bad. 